Good morning, children. Welcome to AIMS India's online classes. This is biology session. You are watching Challenges in Improving Agricultural Products, Part 1. So, you know, children, agriculture is uh, one of the most important occupation in a country like India. Okay. So, you know very well, as the population is increasing day by day, there is a necessity for the improvement in the food resources either in quality and quantity. So, in this uh, lesson, we are going to discuss about the what are the agricultural practices, what are the different methods to improve the food resources, to improve the quality and quantity of food products. Okay? Are you ready children? Let us proceed. Challenges in improving agriculture products. Increasing food production in proportion to compensate the needs of increasing population is a big challenge for our country. Okay? Because uh, as the population is increasing by multiplication, but the food production is increasing by addition. Okay? So, there is a necessity, there is a need for increasing the food production. So, our farmers are constantly trying to meet the challenge against uh, all odds. Odds means uh, hurdles, struggles. You know, it is not that much easy to become a farmer. A farmer has uh, so many problems related to the agriculture. Uh, a farmer, an educated farmer can uh, uh, compensate the problems okay, by applying the knowledge in the process of agriculture and gain maximum benefits. Okay? So, children think about it, write your suggestions to improve food production, okay? uh, general thinking. You know very well, to increase the food production what uh, what is required so land for cultivation so land for cultivation has to increase as the population is increasing what happen most of the lands are converted to human residences for the construction of roads for the construction of bridge for the construction of uh, okay, different uh, for construction purpose the sum of the land is uh, allotted so Agricultural land never and never should be converted into the construction purpose. Okay, that must be one of the suggestion. Okay, next, uh, generally the farmer uh, face uh, problems in selecting the seed. So, being an educated farmer, the farmer has to select uh, the good quality seed. 50 percent of the success of the agriculture depends upon the seed selected by the farmer, growing of seasonal crops, proper irrigation method, proper harvesting method, proper storage methods, all these should be followed. Okay? So, share your ideas with your classmates, your friends. So, what are the common suggestions in your list you can compare. Okay? So, apart from the human beings, the other living creatures also need uh, food to survive. So, many of these animals uh, have been domesticated and uh, live with us. Okay? Human beings are the social animals we can say. Okay? They need, uh, so as we are civilized, as we are, um, once the civilization started, once the human starts settling down, he selected some of the species of the animals for food purpose some of the species of the animals for the transport purpose like that, is not it? You have studied in uh, environmental studies, am I correct? Yes. So, so many of the animals uh, have been uh, domesticated and live with us like cow, goat, sheep, etcetera. So, we need uh, to provide them uh, fodder, brains, food, etcetera. Okay? So, it is our prime responsibility. So, there is a um, one thing uh, that needs to be stressed, 
when we talk about the increasing production. So, it can be explained more easily through an example. Suppose we plant a crop of wheat. Suppose the plants grow nice and healthy, but they do not produce any grain. This is one situation. So, would you call uh, this uh, a good wheat crop? Well, nice. Well, the, uh, the plant grow very nicely without any disease, healthy the plant is, okay, more branches and all those things, but it did not produce any seeds or any grain. So, would you call this a good wheat crop? No. Okay. So, when we talk about increasing production, increasing production, what we mean is increasing that part of the crop that is useful for us, okay, the grain production. So, let us now begin our discussion on increasing production. Okay. So, for example, you can see this figure paddy. So, it is a good crop because showing good pannequins, grains, we can able to see in this picture. Am I correct? Okay, let us uh, uh, begin our discussion on increasing production. The production of crop does not increase. The production of crop does not increase because of any one factor alone. Okay, it does not depend on one factor. So, there are so many circumstances, so many factors on which uh, the production of the crop depends upon. So, only when there is a proper combination of uh, several factors, the production can increase. Some of these factors include the kind of seeds planted, the properties of soil, the availability and uh, proper application of irrigation the irrigation methods and the fertilizers, the weather controlling, the weather conditions, climatic conditions, the controlling uh, insects attack, insects and pests control, then the growth of weeds and their control. So, so many factors. Agriculture is a process. It involves several steps right from the processing of soil to till harvesting. There are so many stages are there, the crop duration. Okay, during the crop duration, so a farmer has to take care of the crop, is not it? Then only can get a good yield. So, experiments done with uh, corn okay, have shown uh, the impact of uh, some of these factors on the crop production. So, if we, these factors are common for uh, many crops. Okay. So, when these factors when uh, taken into control, then automatically give the good result that is production, crop production. Okay. It does not depend on single factor, there are so many factors. Some results of uh, uh, these experiments on corn crop uh, are given in the following table. Let us uh, go through the table here. The method, time of planting, uh, a month after the onset of rains immediately after the onset of rains, uh, this uh, crop is uh, has been planted. The production, if you take uh, 3400 kgs per hectare to 5800 kgs per hectare. Okay, the grain in cages or hectares 2430 cages. Okay. So, the density of planting the plant per hectare 39600, the plants per hectare 19800, this 19800 and here the production is uh, 4100, 5130. Okay. The grain uh, is not mentioned. So, weeding uh, if you take once uh, 4000. 0 for 0 and uh, twice the second time 5200. The nutrient applications without phosphorus 4570 kgs and uh, 56 kgs of phosphorus 
4660 and without nitrogen 4320 78 case of nitrogen the 4900 this is a table the experimental uh, parameters were given in this table okay so the table shows us uh, the grains achieved in production of uh, production by using different methods for example planting the seed at the correct time resulted in a production grain of 5830 to 3400 that equal to if we subtract 2430 kg per hectare is uh, produced that is the yield the calculate the exact grain from each method mentioned in the table and uh, note the results in the table the table is some empty columns are there no so these empty columns uh, you have to fill okay based on this uh, you can fill remaining okay next so you know have some idea about some of the factors that affect the production of various crops let us know now uh, let us discuss the various factors that affect the production of uh, crops in more detail what are the factors affecting the crop production how to increase the food production we know that the cultivated land is very limited no doubt in it so if you make use of plenty of land for cultivation some forest may be destroyed it may lead to deforestation so increasing the area of cultivation to get uh, uh, more quantity of food grains so that is one method but uh, if we increase the area of cultivation we have to destroy the forests if the forests are destroyed the consequences are more more problems may arise okay so we need to think uh, another solution so deforestation is not the right method to increase the food production so observe the following solutions here first increasing the area of cultivated land the number 2 increasing the production in the ex existing land developing high yielding varieties alternating crops mixed crops cultivating short term crops like rabi which of the above options now let us uh, discuss in deep which of the above option do you think uh, is more meaningful so increasing the area of cultivated land this is not the right method so increasing the production in existing land okay we can think about it developing high yielding varieties yes it is possible alternating crops this is also possible mixed crops this is also possible cultivating short term crops like rabi okay rabi means uh, so these are the winter season crops that are sown around uh, the month of november and harvested around the month of april okay november to april examples uh, some uh, crops like uh, wheat uh, peas gram mustard linseed barley they are all rabi crops okay so short term crops can be grown so these are some of the out of the six uh, solutions uh, the five are uh, possible to implement and you have already learned about uh, long term and short term crops or kharif and uh, rabi crops what are kharif crops uh, okay in your social studies also you come across kharif season and rabi season will be there kharif crops and rabi crops kharif uh, crop means uh, these are uh, seasonal based rainy season crops that are sown around the month of uh, june and harvested around the month of uh, october okay example for uh, kharif crops uh, paddy maize uh, cotton pigeon pea black gram green gram soya bean sugar cane these are all rain dependent crops okay depending upon the nature of the soil we have to select the crop 
which is suited to that particular season Kharif season and uh, Rabi season. Okay, the short term varieties, short term varieties produce grains uh, more than long term varieties. Okay, this is the point to be noted. Now, alternating of crops uh, preserve the soil fertility. Yes, definitely, because all crops may not uh, require uh, the same kind of nutrients. Okay, so definitely when we change the crop, okay, alternating the crop, this season if you are growing uh, the groundnut, the next season you can grow another crop, okay, which adds some nutrients to the soil and uh, which uh, replenish the soil minerals also, okay. So, mixed crop system, mixed crops system helps the farmer, so this is uh, the modern methods, helps the farmers to produce variety of crops as well as increase production. To get a high yield, three types of methods are being used. What are those three types? Improving high yielding varieties. Okay. So, we can say crop variety improvement it is called. Then using a high yield management methods, it is also called crop production improvement. Okay. Crop production management or crop production improvement. The next crop protection management, this is very very important. So, to get a high yield, three types of methods are being used improving high yielding varieties, using high yield management methods, crop protection management. Okay, the first improving high yielding varieties, crop variety improvement. The crop variety improvement uh, deals with the selection and cultivation of crops that are favorable characteristics for improved food production to sustain the large population. Okay. So, you can see observe the size and color of the maize in your kitchen. If not, uh, ask your mother why she does not purchase maize as a food material. So, some seeds are small with yellow color and some are large with white color. Okay. There are two varieties are there in the maize journal, okay. yellow and uh, white. So, the different crops have different uh, the abiotic factors required that is air, water, photo period, temperature and soil for their growth and reproduction. Hence, uh, in order to achieve crop variety improvement, the type of crop and its uh, uh, various abiotic factors requirement must be considered carefully. For example, photo period which refers to the total duration of daylight to which uh, an organism can be exposed affects the flowering and growth of the plant, is not it. So, here among these two for example, uh, we are uh, considered uh, maize crop, the white colored large ones are hybrid variety, okay, yellow one is a uh, local variety they give high yield which one white colored maize. An experiment was conducted to find out how irrigation affected the crop production, the production of a, a crop. In the experiment, uh, the crops were grown in two fields. One field was irrigated while uh, other was not. The same amount of uh, nutrients like nitrogen was applied to both the fields. Okay. So, this uh, the two fields selected, in these two fields uh, the crops are grown, same variety of crops grown. For one field uh, the irrigation irrigated regularly whereas, other not irrigated, but the nutrients like nitrogen was applied to both the fields. These are the two varieties, one is hybrid white color and the local variety yellow color. Okay. Large size and white color they are hybrid maize whereas, uh, the figure 2 represent the local variety yellow color. 
okay. So, now in the experiment uh, however, the amount of nitrogen was increased by the same quantity for successive crops uh, in both the irrigated and uh, unirrigated fields. The results of the experiment are illustrated in the form of a graph here. So, this is the graph, the graph 1. On the basis of graph 1, uh, explain the importance of irrigation. You can see here this graph on the x axis, uh, um, this is a supply of nitrogen per kg per hectare is mentioned in the x axis down. The y axis, uh, the production of uh, the grain in uh, uh, per uh, ton per hectare. Okay. So, here uh, the blue graph uh, representing uh, the blue line in the graph representing uh, sufficient supply of water in the first field. In the second field, uh, the red uh, representing the less supply of water. Okay. So, what difference is there in the crop production when the same quantity of nitrogen is supplied to both the irrigated and unirrigated field. So, in the irrigated field uh, as uh, the nitrogen is uh, dissolved in the water and uh, dissolved in the soil minerals, it was observed by the roots of the plants. So, the production is uh, somewhat uh, more compared to this uh, unirrigated field. Okay, here decrease you see. So, here to 6 then 200. Okay. So, here so you can see the difference you can see the difference. So, like this uh, the crop uh, a plant or even uh, animal product uh, grown or produced in large numbers on a large area of land extensively for food and other purposes is uh, known as a crop actually. We can classify the crops into based on the season. There are uh, three kinds of crops we can say that is Karif, Rabi and another one is also there that is uh, Jade crops. What are Jade crops children? Jade crops means these are the crops are mainly grown in the summer season. Jade crop, J-A-I-D. Jade crop means uh, sown during the month of March and harvested by June and July. Example for this uh, jade crops, uh, musk melon, watermelon, bitter gourd, pumpkin. These are all the jade crops. Jade crops are grown on irrigated lands which do not have to wait for monsoon. Okay. So, it is uh, nowadays uh, the farmers uh, are intelligent, okay. they are utilizing their knowledge uh, in uh, uh, off seasons also they are growing these type of crops. Okay. They would not wait for monsoon an intelligent farmer. They are growing in the duration between the Rabi and Karif season in between the gap the crop seasons. The main produce are seasonal fruits and uh, vegetables, seasonal fruits and uh, vegetables this bitter gourd pumpkin okay. and uh, the musk melon and watermelons during summer there is a great demand for them is not it. So, knowledge is required for a farmer education educated farmer will face the any kind of problem during this uh, process of agriculture okay, from the sowing of seeds to till harvest. Okay, children we will continue in the next class please read the textbook thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for receiving latest updates.